So folks, um, this day, this morning, I got up and I was reading the business section as I always do. At least I started the New York Post from Ken Fisher. And uh, we, have it, we have it made for you. But basically, this is Peter Tuckman, who we have as a regular guest on the show. And the conversation within the article was basically about the volatility of the markets and the many faces of Peter Tuckman, um, you know, the most photographed Wall Street trader. He's with us right now, Peter Tuckman, senior board, uh, senior equity floor broker at Trade Moss. Thank you for being here. And it basically shows the many faces of a trader because volatility is okay. But the article of Ken Fisher basically also says that over time, markets go higher. And that's the premise, right? I mean, how worried are you on any, you know, today, for example? So look, I, you know, my, uh, my, 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 my facial expressions aren't posed. Okay, on any given day, we're, we're trading, look, I, I, I trade for a hedge fund, I trade for Trade Moss. Any given day, we're trading thousands and, and millions of dollars worth of stock. And so for me, I'm a customer guy. So my emotions really reflect, not necessarily the volatility in the marketplace, but just how I'm doing relative to what I'm trying to take care of my customers. And that's a super important thing. I have no ax to grind whether the market goes up or down. For me, it's really, it's a customer thing. So you'll see my expressions be upbeat, you'll see them downbeat. And yes, right. it does reflect the volatility in the market. Think about it. Over the last four years, we've basically barely had a day where we didn't have at least a 1% move. So I know Mr. Fisher, thank you, Mr. Fisher, for, for mentioning my name. And I know we, we uh, you know, very right. often they will use my expression when markets are down, but we also have the irrational enthusiasm we've right. had. So, so the volatility works on both sides. So advice for investors is basically, this goes back to 1925, and it says since uh, they started doing this data since right. 1925, looking at the S&P 500, that the S&P 500 has gained in 73% of rolling 12-month periods, and to the rolling five-year periods becomes 80 Eight percent. I mean, it basically shows how um, well an investor can do over time, um, a compounded dollar. What's your advice to folks now um, in this particular higher for longer environment? How would you say for them to put a portfolio together? So, um, look, the S&P, in my opinion, is really a spectacular indice. It, look, it's got a huge footprint. It really covers the market and gives people a breath. We know that year over year, the S&P does go up historically. We also know that every one of the pullbacks or crashes or whatever, and I don't use the word crash lightly, has been a better buying opportunity than selling opportunity, uh -huh. right? Historically over time, and, and uh, look, and if you look at the last year or two, the trend on the S&P has been spectacular. And we're seeing a bit of a breath here with the, yeah. you know, look, you're going to see what's healthy. If you look at what, what we call a trend trade, a trade where the market's going up in, in, in one direction or another, and it pulls back to a certain level and continues, building a foundation to go higher, right? Those are healthy for the market. We had a fast and furious move. We're three months into this year. We just finished out the first quarter. It's been a spectacular quarter, even though we do have a lot of headwinds, right? You still have the interest rate story, what's going on there. We did have a little bit hotter CPI, PPI number that mm -hmm. came in. Mm -hmm. And look, this week, let's we, we got to talk about the, the, the gorilla in the room was Jay Powell this week said a number of things that let the market uh, un unleash the bulls into the market. And my analysis of it was the, on Wednesday, he was talking about a lot of things. But at one point, he said, We've seen the high that interest rates are going to give. For me, my analysis of that, that statement literally let the market unleash because we had gone up 100, down 100 while he was started the news conference. But literally when, look, markets don't like unknowns. They don't like that anxiety. So when they have something that's etched in stone, and we don't know, three interest rate raises, right. 75 basis points, you know, how, when is that going to happen? Is it, may he change if CPI, well, if, if in, inflation doesn't, uh, yeah. get back on track but but it's um but when he said that literally the market just took off because that was clear at Shinstone. we are now the next move is going to be downward on interest rates and yeah. that's sort of positive for the market yeah yeah and look you know um it's supposedly three cuts but the dot plots were looking more like less than three so maybe it'll be two cuts um that being said names like apple have pulled back. I know you're not going to do specific names, but, right. um, you know, Apple is down off the highs year to date. It's down 11%. Um, 
you know, some of these names have pulled back off the highs. Some of the Magnificent Seven, some Correct. of the hot tech or growth stocks. Are those opportunities? You know what? They, ab they absolutely have to be. Right, whether I mean, and I'm not an advisor, but if you just look at the stock, I think the AI thing is a phenomenon. It's a revolution, and that's a big deal. Okay, I think it's important for us to note that stocks do pull back when they've had fast and furious rallies. This year has mm -hmm. been really a rational right. exuberance in so many ways. I think the Apple pullback is more a function of the DOJ story than a pullback. You're going to see some of the other Magnificent Seven come in because yeah. that's what they do. Also, think about it. We're up against this a little bit of technical resistance of 40,000 in, yeah. in the Dow. We blew through S&P 5,000 quite significantly and rather quickly, but we, are, we actually got 100 130 points away from Dow 40,000. I know. And I have exciting. printed up the hats. Everybody's been asking. Uh -huh. But we don't bring them out. We don't want to pull the Kavorka on it. We don't bring them out until we close above that level. Right. But I think it's, look, we're these milestones and thresholds are significant in a lot of different ways. But very often we will pull back before either we create a base yeah. or we come in. Yeah. And look, we have uh, rules on the hats. We got rules on the hats. Yes, superstitions very, that we very must follow. Very superstitious. Um, the Magnificent Seven, by the way, has now become the star attraction for Norway's sovereign wealth fund. At the same time, Apple, Meta, Google, Google Alphabet are all right. under scrutiny, and we'll continue to talk about this throughout the show. EU launching antitrust probes. Hmm. And this comes after last week when we heard about Apple under the microscope. Thank you so much, Peter Tuckman. Absolutely a pleasure. Great to see you of Trade Moss. A good discussion to kick off a busy week.